In music theory, two of the most important patterns are the circle of fifths and the circle of thirds. Now, most people don't really understand how these patterns work, which is crazy because they are super fundamental to music. So we're going to dive into the special connections and differences between the circle of fifths and the circle of thirds. And by the end, you'll really understand how they work and see how they form this super pattern of harmony that provides crazy cool insights into how chord progressions are formed, how to create any chord extension, and really everything you want to know about chords. Okay, so we're going to start with the circle of fifths, which shown here are concentric rings of chords. Major chords in the center, surrounded by a ring of minor chords, and around that is a ring of diminished chords. And you can picture these harmonies as guitar chords like this, or just as the root notes for each chord, which I explain in much more detail in other videos, looking at the special relationships and patterns that are present in the circle of fifths. But here's a quick look at how this pattern is formed. Let's say we start with the C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The second half of this pattern, starting on the fifth note of C major, starts another scale, the G major scale. And starting on the fifth note of that pattern, we get the D major scale, and so on. Moving through all 12 keys, we get this daisy chain pattern or big overlapping loop of major scales that we call the circle of fifths. It's an endless cycle or circle of fifths, the circle of fifths. Moving in a clockwise direction, the pattern moves through a series of fifths. Or in a counterclockwise direction, it's a series of fourths. The circle of fourths and the circle of fifths are really just the same thing. And what's cool is that when we condense this pattern into the 12 fundamental notes of music and then rearrange the sequence into the chromatic scale, it's now easier to see how all of the notes are related. For example, if we play the C major scale again, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, you can see how these notes are really just a rearranged segment of the circle of fifths. That's why these notes sound compatible, why this pattern sounds so good. Or as another example, if you take, say, the A flat major scale, the same idea applies because music is symmetrical. So this scale is also just a rearranged segment of the circle of fifths. So this is what I mean when I say the circle of fifths is fundamental to music because it informs the relationships between notes. It's baked into all of the patterns that you hear in music. And just as it informs the relationships between notes and scales, the same is also true for how this pattern, how the circle of fifths, informs the formation of chords. To see what I mean, let's build the circle of fifths once again, playing through each major scale in sequence to form this interlocked ring. And when we zoom in on one scale, like this F major scale, for example, you can see how we can build seven different chords from this pattern just by combining every other note, which in this key are F major, G minor, A minor, B flat major, C major, D minor, and E diminished. And because all keys are symmetrical, we can form chords in the same way in any key, including the key of C, G, D, etc. Like I say, I explain the formation of chords and how they're arranged in the circle of fifths in more detail in other videos. But the main idea here is that seven chords are formed in each key. And just as each key shares some notes, they also share certain chords. So the chords that appear in each key overlap. Some of them are major, other harmonies are minor, and some are diminished. And together they form this pattern of harmonies, which shows which chords are grouped together in each key. That is, which harmonies naturally go together or are compatible because they stem from the same source scale. Whether you're looking at a major key, like this key of C major, or any of its parallel modes, like C Lydian, or C Mixolydian, Dorian, Aeolian, Phrygian, or Locrian. Because of how these chords are naturally arranged within the circle of fifths, and how all of the parallel modes are situated next to each other as neighbors within this pattern, the circle of fifths is like a guide to composing progressions. Whether you stay within a given mode, or borrow chords from parallel modes, or move between different modes within a song for modal mixture, or do whatever you want really. This is the power of the circle of fifths as a kind of map for writing cool chord progressions. So what then is the circle of thirds? A good way to think of it is if the circle of fifths is like this bird's eye view, this 10,000 foot view of how all of the chords are connected within different keys and different modes. The circle of thirds is a zoomed in view, more to a 10 foot view close up at a given key or mode. So you can see the connections between chords in that specific pattern, and it's also useful for building extended chords. So check this out. To picture this visually, let's take the C Ionian mode, or the major scale, and from this pattern, again, we can build seven different triads, seven different chords, where each is formed by starting on each respective scale degree and then combining every other note. In each chord, the interval between notes is either a major third or a minor third. 
are what are also called Tertian intervals. Tertian just means three, and these are intervals of thirds, major thirds, minor thirds, hence the name Tertian. So really that's how all of these chords are formed, through Tertian intervals. And if we collapse all of these chords into a single sequence, you can see how these Tertian intervals form this kind of wave or alternating pattern, like a natural current of harmony that links all of the chords together. And just like everything else in music, this pattern could also go on forever. So when we wrap it into a loop, it forms this endless cycle or circle of thirds, major thirds and minor thirds. It's a circle of thirds, where you can see how all of the chords within this key bleed seamlessly into one another, just like all the scales did in the circle of fifths. For example, we have the major one chord, in this case C major, which shares notes with E minor, the minor three, which in turn shares notes with G major, the major five chord, which leads to the diminished seventh chord, the minor two, the major four, the minor six, and then back to the major one chord. All of the chords in this circle of thirds overlap or bleed seamlessly into one another. And these connections between harmonies, the notes that are shared between them, inform the flow of chords within a given progression. And this pattern also explains how to build extended chords starting on each note. Because just as the basic chords or the basic triads in a key are formed by combining every other note, all of the other chords are also built using the same basic pattern. So starting on the major one chord, in this example C major, we have C, E, and G. Adding the next note, spaced at the interval of a third, or B, we get the C major seven chord. Adding the D, we get C major nine. Adding F gets us C major 11, then adding A gives us C major 13. Or if we start on the E minor chord, the minor three, we have E minor, E minor seven, E minor flat nine, E minor flat nine 11, and then E minor flat nine flat 13. Or as one more example, if we start on G and add a seventh, we get G7, then G9, G11, and G13. And it's the same for all of the other chords in this key. Now I'm moving through this pretty fast, but like I say, I explain these in greater depth, detail, and at a slower pace in other videos. But the idea here is that the circle of fifths and the circle of thirds aren't these separate isolated patterns. They actually go hand in hand, and this is what I mean. This arrangement of tertian intervals easily informs the construction of chords, not only in the Ionian mode, in this example C Ionian, but in any mode, since each mode is just a permutation of a major key. For example, if we make this D, the minor one, we get the D Dorian mode, which uses the same pattern, all of the same chords, since D Dorian is just a permutation of C Ionian. Or if we focus on the E note here as the tonic, as the one chord, we get the E Phrygian mode, again using the same pattern, all of the same chords. And likewise, this same configuration, the same circle of thirds, also shows us F Lydian, G Mixolydian, A Aeolian, and B Locrian. So in other words, when we treat each root note as the tonic chord, this circle of thirds illustrates all seven of the relative modes within this key. Both the circle of thirds and the circle of fifths are important because they provide their own insights into how chords are related, into the music theory of harmony. While the circle of fifths shows the relationships between all chords in every key and every mode all at the same time in a zoomed out view, the circle of thirds is more of a zoomed in view, showing how all of the chords within a given key and mode are linked together, how they share some of the same notes through interlocking tertian intervals, which explain how to build triads, seventh chords, and extended chords starting on any note. But what's mind-blowingly cool is how these different patterns, how the circle of fifths and the circle of thirds actually work together. They're not just separate patterns that are isolated, they actually work hand in hand, and here's what I mean. If we take the circle of fifths like this with all of the major chords at the center, surrounded by minor chords and then diminished chords, and then around that place each circle of thirds above its respective key, we get this super pattern of harmony. So looking at the key of C, for example, C Ionian, in the circle of fifths, you can see the seven chords are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. And in the circle of thirds, the same seven chords are formed, but with the added insight how to build extended chords within this key. Or if instead of C Ionian, we say it's D Dorian, where this D minor chord becomes the tonic, the minor one, the circle of fifths and the circle of thirds both show the relationships between chords in this mode, in their own special ways. The circle of fifths illustrates how these harmonies are positioned within the larger context of parallel modes, while again the circle of thirds clarifies the connections between individual harmonies and how to build extended chords in this mode. And because music is cyclical and symmetrical, these same patterns and connections
directions are consistent no matter where you look in this diagram. It's beautiful. And it is music theory by definition, which means to see sound. So hopefully this was helpful. Now you know that the circle of fifths and the circle of thirds are not these distinct, abstract, and disconnected patterns that are intricately connected. They inform each other and are different perspectives on harmony that combined form this super pattern of insight into music and music theory. And all of these diagrams are in a post in the community. The link is in the video notes, so check that out if you'd like to. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.